Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapske, and we're back with another episode of Cheap Shots. This is a series of video tutorials that shows you how to save money on the hobby aspect of wargaming. On this episode, episode number 25, we're going to show you how to cheaply and quickly paint up some blood letters of corn. And as you can see in this photo here, this is an example of what your guys' miniatures would look like if you follow the methods as well as the tutorials that we're going to show you here. We're going to show you how to quickly paint up 20 blood letters of of corn really really fast we're also going to show you the techniques that we use to save a ton of money on this one uh, a little over 120 dollars worth of savings uh, by using this cheapskate method that we're going to show you here today so that being said let's go ahead and talk about exactly what you need to do in order to paint quickly and cheaply 20 blood letters of corn let's get this started all right, so first of all, the thing you gotta do first is use primer. Um, my suggestion to you for doing uh, blood letters like this, the fastest, easiest way of painting up an entire unit like this is to just to spray it all with spray paint. It puts down a really fast base coat really, really quickly. It saves you a lot of time and effort. And let's face it, most blood letters of corn usually have a red color scheme associated to them. And so that's exactly what we did here. We basically used two paints. The first thing you need to do is spray paint all of your miniatures in flat white spray paint. Uh, the brand I like to use is a brand called Color Place. It's sold by Walmart. Uh, it's got a really cheap white flat spray paint. Runs you about 98 cents a can. Uh, the reason why you want to prime your miniatures first with the white spray is because if you try to use the red spray paint on gray plastic, the gray uh, color from the plastic will really mess up your uh, with your red color. So that's why you got to put down a primer first. So my suggestion to you is to lightly dust your miniatures with some flat white spray paint, let it dry, and once that's done, go ahead and buy a can of Krylon Satin Finish Burgundy Red, and then spray paint the entirety of your miniatures. You don't have to worry about covering every single nook and cranny with this, you just want to get a nice solid base coat across the entirety of the miniature as much as you can. Be sure not to overspray too much, because if you do, you can clog up detail really, really quickly. So you can see in this photo, I've just kind of done this with these 20 miniatures. I spray paint with a flat white spray, and then I of course, I hit him again with a satin finish red burgundy by Krylon. Uh, that one running about five bucks a can off of that spray paint. But uh, as you can see here, you get a really nice, really good, rich red color to work off of. And uh, that's the very first step that you need to do in order to uh, start priming your miniatures. All right, so once you're done spray painting your miniatures, the next thing you have to do is a base coat. And luckily, like I said before, all Blood Letters of Corn, I usually have a red color scheme. So what I suggest you do is you buy yourself a bottle of Anita's Acrylic uh, True Red Paint. Runs you about 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And what you need to do is just take that red spray paint, add that red paint, and just paint over the parts of the miniature that the uh, sprays missed. Um, these Blood Letters have like this hunched over kind of pose. So because of that, usually their chest and their bellies won't get an even coat of the uh, white and the red spray. So because of that, that'll be a really good place for you to start off with. Uh, just take that Anita's Red and just quickly painting the parts that the spray missed. Now you might be wondering, well, Commander Cheapskate, what if the red color is a little bit different than the red that you used to spray with? That's perfectly fine if it is a little bit different because the reason why is when we're done with our oil wash, it's gonna blend it out anyways. And plus when we dry brush our miniatures, it's gonna help blend all the colors and make it look all the same anyhow. And plus when we use our blood effect, you could definitely use that to fix up any mistakes that you also have later on down the line. So just give it a quick once over, maybe two coats if you're really, really, uh, you know, really, vigorous about making sure you got an even coverage i just put a single coat of the of the anita's true red on the parts that needed uh, fixing and that's all i really did and then once you're done with that you're ready to move on to your next step which is dry brushing so we're done with the priming, we're done with the base coating. The next thing you need to do, of course, is dry brush your entire miniature. And the problem that most people run into is what color do you use in order to dry brush red? Unfortunately, red is one of those really difficult colors to get done well on miniatures. So usually finding a dry brush to, uh, color that kind of helps balance that out a little bit could be kind of hard. Uh, some people like to use different shades of pink. Some people like to use lighter red. Uh, from this example, though, I like to use orange. Uh, orange is a nice highlighting color. It catches all the raised surfaces, adds some real depth to your miniatures and so the color i like to use is tropic orange by apple barrel paint it's a two ounce tube that runs you about 50 cents at your local walmart so that's the nice thing about it and uh, just do a quick once over with the dry brushing and all the fleshy parts of your demons of corn um, as you can see a lot of these blood letters have like these kind of pimply warty scaly type of texture done on their skin so that's all i did real quick just give a real even dry brush all over the surfaces of their skin is what I did. And you don't have to worry about being too neat at this stage just because all you're really doing is just catching all the raised surfaces. 
on the flesh of your blood letters. And that's exactly what I did real quick. Um, it's always good to just dry brush your miniatures lightly because it's always easy to add more dry brushing onto your miniatures if you want a, you know, more of a permanent orange pronouncement on your, uh, on your blood letters. However, if you put too much on at one time, it could really screw it up. So always start off light and then add on if you need to. Uh, luckily for me, I was able to just get it done in one coat. And as you can see already, a lot of the details like the scales on their skin, you know, the folds in their, on their flesh, uh, the horns, that kind of thing. I just kind of did the once over, brought up a lot of those details. And that's all you need to do. Just do a quick little dry brush with some Tropic Orange. And once you're done with the dry brushing, the next thing you need to do now is pick out all the details on these miniatures that are going to be black. Luckily, Demons of Corn are very monochromatic in, this, in, the, in the paint scheme. Usually it's a lot of red, a lot of metallics, and a lot of black. It's pretty much what it is. You got a really limited palette that you have to work with when it comes to uh, corn armies. So in this case, uh, I decided to use Pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. Uh, pavement is a very, very, very dark, dark gray is what it is. It's not absolutely black. It's just like a really dark gray. And I like that. That color a lot because the way that the apple barrel pavement paint is made it has a slight texture to it which makes it really really nice so that way when you dry brush it later on it really catches a lot of the highlights when you dry brush it real quick so because of that I just use uh, two coats of apple barrel pavement paint it runs you about 50 cents per tube I picked out all the horns as you can see I also picked out the grips of their hell blades that they're carrying same thing with the uh, banner there on the right hand side that flag I just painted up with the solid black as well also did the same thing on the horns and claws and anything else that I wanted to be painted black real quick. Um, I recommend putting two layers of pavement onto your miniature for this step just because the red is going to show through if you only put one coat on. So that's why I suggest using two thin coats on that one. And then once you're done, you're ready to move on to the next step. So now that we have all the black base coat, the next thing you do now is to put a dry brush on it. I like to use Anita's acrylic paints, uh, just gray color. It's a nice... You know, even shade of gray runs you about 65 cents at Hobby Lobby. And all I did with that real quick is just to, once again, um, just dry brush all the parts that are painted black. So the horns, the claws, uh, the little fins and the spines on the back that the uh, demons have on, the on their backs. Uh, any part that I painted black, I just do a quick once over with the dry brushing on gray. It's pretty simple. Um, once again, like I said, it's uh, if you need to do your dry brushing, start off very lightly and then add more layers as you want to. And you can make it as dark or as bright of a dry brush that you want. Um, it's up to your personal preference. I just did it once over just to add a little bit of highlighting to their horns and the parts that are black, and that's all I really did for that part. And then you're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so the next base coat that color I have to use is for all the tongues. These demon, these blood letters have these super long tongues that are sticking out of their mouths. So because of that, I just used Light Pink by Apple Barrel Paint. It's another 50 cent tube that runs you two fluid ounces. And I just did a quick once over with the pink on all their tongues, just so that way it just kind of sticks out. And that way it's not too, doesn't blend in so much into the uh, fleshy color of the body. And you don't really have to put more than one coat on it, really. Uh, the reason why is because in this technique, um, I cover the, the tongues with my homemade blood effect. Uh, just because, you know, it's just kind of like imagine blood letters having blood coming out of their mouths because, you know, they're blood letters. But anyways, um, so that's what I just did real quick. Just a really quick, simple one coat of light pink on all the tongues that are exposed, and then you're ready to move on to your next step. All right, so the next step I did next is for the base coating on the eyes on this one. I decided to use Apple Barrel Sky Blue for the uh, eye color just to make it look like these eyes are glowing. And all I just did real quick is took a fine point uh, pa uh, little uh, paintbrush, dipped into some sky blue, and just put a dot and just painted the entire eye socket. Now, you might be wondering, well, Mr. Well, Iron uh, 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 Commander Chiefsgate, what about it spilling over the edges outside of the eye? That that's perfectly fine if it goes outside the eye socket. By doing this sky blue right next to it, it makes it look like the eyes are glowing. And so, if you have a little spillover, don't feel bad because, you know, it makes it look like it's glowing with the inner blue light, is what it ends up looking like from a distance, anyways. And even up close, if you look at it, so it looks really, really nice. Uh, you'll just need one single coat of sky blue. It's a very, very sharp, uh, very, very strong color that just kind of, you know, it's very opaque as well. So because that just kind of blends really nicely with the red and just kind of sticks out there. And by the time you get done washing these things in the oil wash, it's going to really dull down that color. So it's going to help it kind of blend in and make it look really nice at the same time. So that's what exactly what I use. Sky blue by Apple Barrel Paint. Once again, runs you about 50 cents. And the very last detail we need to take care of for these miniatures is white, and that's for all the teeth. Uh, blood letters have a lot of teeth, a lot of fangs. They also have some parts that have some bones sticking out as well. And for those uh, pieces, I decided to just use Apple Barrel White Paint is what I decided to use. Um, it's a, once again, just a nice, it's cheap paint. I have a huge 
uh, tube of this stuff that runs eight fluid ounces. That runs me, I think, three bucks at my local Walmart. But uh, you could also find those simple two fluid ounce tubes as well. It does exactly the same thing. And all I did real quick is just pick out the uh, teeth. I also picked out the skulls and some of the standard bearers as well as the uh, the horns on the other standard bearer as well. Uh, you will have to use two coats of white paint in order to make sure you hide that red color. Um, if a little bit of blue, if I wouldn't really worry too much about going beyond that because if some red does show through, uh, when you get to the oil washing stage, it's gonna take care of that anyway, so you don't have to really worry about that part. But once you're done with that white, the principal painting on your blood letters is pretty done, pretty much done. And uh, after this point, we're just moving on to the metallics as well as to the hell blades themselves. And uh, however you wanna paint your hell blade is up to you, but I decided to go with a glowing fire effect on my hell blade, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that part next. All right, so now we're moving on to the Hellblades. These are actually the weapons that the Bloodletters of Corn are carrying. And I decided to go with a fiery, kind of like these blades are glowing with a, like, a, like a hotness, like a, like a fire within them. Um, some people could use just metallic paints. You could paint them silver, nothing wrong with that. You can paint them blue if you want. You can paint them whatever color you want. Uh, these things are magical swords that are forged in the realm of chaos. So who are we to limit your imagination when it comes to your blades? Um, and just in this example, I decided to go with the, kind of like a burning ember type of look for the blades. Like these are hunks of metal that just came freshly out of the forge and so they're still glowing red. Um, so because of that, I decided to go with that look. What I used real quick was Ripe Tomato by Apple Barrel Paint. It's another two ounce tube that runs at 50 cents. It's a really rich orange color. Uh, almost to a red. So what I did is I just did two coats real quick of that stuff onto the length of the hell blades. I uh, don't have to be particularly neat at this point. Just any parts that are the hell blade that you want it to be a glowing red color. Um, just put two thin coats of uh, ripe tomato on it and uh, let it dry. So now that we have all the orange blades painted with orange, the next thing we gotta do now is start dry brushing different colors on it. Um, to make that glowing red effect, what I decided to do is dry brush the ripe tomato blades with tropic orange once again. This is the Amazon color we use to dry brush the flesh of these blood letters. I did exactly the same thing on the blades as well. You kinda wanna layer lighter, progressively lighter colors onto the blades uh, to make it have this blazing effect. So you start off with ripe tomato, then you dry brush it really quickly with some tropic orange. It helps to pick out the edges of the blade, also makes this kind of like streaky pattern make it look like the you know the flames are kind of glowing throughout the entirety of the blade and it looks really really cool as well so you just need to do that a couple of times uh, put as much orange tropic orange you want on it to get the effect that you want and then you're ready to move on and the very last dry brush that I put on my blades is uh, Sunny Day by Apple Barrel. It's another two ounce tube that costs you 50 cents. It's a nice canary yellow, kind of like a pastel chalky kind of yellow color. And I just did that once, I uh, just gave them a quick once over real quick on the hell blades and just kind of, you know, gave them a dry brushing on that. And as you can see, it makes these blades like this kind of yellowish or orange glowing effect on the weapons. And it's just really, really cool looking to make it look like these things are, you know, freshly forged from the fires of hell uh, type of effect on the blades. And so that makes it really simple. So just a quick dry brush on your apple barrel, sunny day, and uh, make it as light or as dark as you want. Um, I like my blades just a little bit darker, so I didn't put very much on there besides the initial dry brush. But if you want to add more layers onto it, feel free to do so. All right, and the very last thing we need to do now is paint all the metallics. In this case, I use Pure Gold by Folk Art. I decided to use that to pick out the grips of the uh, standard bearers uh, to make it look like it's kind of like this bronzy, kind of brassy look color go scheme going on with the uh, poles of the standards. Uh, same thing with the skull of corn icons that are on the top of both standards. I also did exactly the same thing as well. And then also the same thing with like the instrument from the horn blower and as well as the hilts, as well as the pommels of all the hell blades as well. It's a nice bright yellowish gold color that's made by folk art and runs you about 75 cents it's a two ounce tube so you can definitely you know use it as much as you want um i put um, me personally i put three layers of this paint on uh for all the metallic pieces uh, that one was the most probably the most painstakingly boring process of this entire thing was putting on three layers of it and the reason why is because you really want to make sure that the red doesn't bleed through on the metals so that's the reason why i did that the nice thing about uh the gold color on the red is that it is kind of complementary, so it does kind of add a little bit of a copperish color to your gold as you paint onto on layers. So I just did three layers real quick just because I wanted the pommels to really be distinctive. Same thing with the horn caps on the uh, champion for the unit as well. Same thing with the skull icons, um, uh, the skull of corn icon icons on the standard bearers as well. So that's all I did. Just put um, three layers of pure gold on it and then you're ready to go. And believe it or not, you are actually done with uh, painting up your, uh, doing all the base working and the and the uh, painting for your blood letters. And now what you gotta do now is just move on to an oil wash. 
So because this is a quick paint method, uh, we're gonna do a quick oil wash over the entirety of the miniature. What I like to use is Minwax Poly Shades. I like to use the Mission Oak color. It runs you about seven bucks per can. You could buy uh, Army Painter Strong Tone or Soft Tone or Hardcore Tone or whatever they, whatever they call those cans. Uh, you could use that if you want to. The difference though is that it's $32 per can while Minwax Poly Shades is seven bucks per can and does exactly the same thing. And so that's exactly what I did. So I just kind of painted the entirety of the miniature real quick with some Mission Oak, um, with some uh, Poly Shades Mission Oak. And as you can see in this picture, it just kind of blends in all the colors. All the dry brushing on the flesh kind of blends in with the uh, redness of the flesh as well. The gray highlighting that you did with your dry brushing blends in with the black. The orange, uh, reddish, yellowish gold blades that we have for the help blades, it all blends in as well. And as you see, it also kind of mutes down the brightness of the miniature. It all really darkens it down and kind of blends all the colors together. Same thing with the bl glowing blue eyes that these miniatures have as well kind of suppresses a little bit more and makes it look really good in fact um I, this picture is kind of taken far away because i wanted you to see what the product i used on it i'm going to show you the next slide when i zoom in and show you exactly what it looks like when it's all done so here is a close-up of the after the oil wash and this is just i just freshly uh got these guys painted up in the oil wash real quick so they are kind of shiny right now because they're you know they just got done uh being painted with the oil wash but as you can see it really brings a lot of the details it really shows the the, the texture of the skin it does a really good job of blending our dry brushing and our highline that we've done for everything it also subdues the blueness of the eyes so that way you have that faint blow glowing blue look but it's not over pronounced it also darkened down the tongues which were bright pink and made it look really nice as well and in fact um, while we were painting these they looked kind of chalky during the process of us painting because we were dry brushing these things but now as you can see it brought all that texture together and just kind of subdued it all and kind of ran into the recess to bring out those details now i do recommend that you wait 24 hours to let this stuff dry before you move on uh, the reason why is because if you try to paint or do anything else in the miniatures while it's still wet it's really going to screw up your finish so i recommend waiting 24 hours before you work on these miniatures again because you know if this stuff is still wet and you're fingers accidentally touch the uh, stickiness of the uh, metal wax polish you can leave fingerprints behind or remove pieces of paint on accident because it's very very sticky so i suggest you wait about 24 hours to let that dry as well as cure and so uh, with that we move on to the next step now this next step uh, is applying a matte varnish spray to flatten the sheen on the miniatures after you're done. Now, this one is of course totally up to your pre personal preference. If you like to have that high gloss finish on your miniatures, then by all means you can skip this stage if you want to. Me though, I like my miniatures to be a little bit more subdued. I don't like that sheen that you get when you uh, with the, from the poly acrylic once you're done with that. So I just take a can of uh, Cryolon matte varnish spray. It runs you about five bucks at the local Walmart. And I just did it the once over real quick, just lightly dust these guys in matte varnish and as you can see here now it brings all the details together you can see the creases of the skin where the oil wash is seeped into it you can see the glowing of the blades and it just looks really really awesome and your miniatures look pretty good for a tabletop standard considering it only took you maybe a day or two of painting up to this point so it looks really really nice as well so now that we have that part all finished the next part we need to work on next is on the bases so the next step, of course, we gotta do is now paint the bases. And I base coat the entirety of the base, both the rim as well as the texture on top with pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. Um, my favorite texture to use on my miniatures is the sand and wood glue method. I've shown this before in other episodes of Cheap Shots, how you can get that sandy texture on your miniatures really, really quick. All you gotta do is just cover your base with some wood glue, add some sand, wait for it to dry, then hit it again with some watered down wood glue to make a sealant, and you got a nice textured base. Uh, for these miniatures, I'm gonna go with this kind of like this ashen, burnt out, fallout, Dante's Inferno looking type hellscape look is what I'm trying to go with. So because of that, I painted all the bases in this black color with the pavement from Apple Barrel Paint. And the reason why is because I'm going to plan on dry brushing it with lighter shades of gray to make it look like it's a really bad ashy ruin. And I'm going to use some homemade blood effect to make it look like these ashy ruins are like covered in blood as well because that just seems very thematic for a uh, corn army. So that's exactly what I'm doing on this one. So I do use Apple Barrel Pavement. You will need to put two thin coats of pavement onto the bases just because of all the red that you had on it from when you did your spray painting. You could, of course, just use one coat if you want to, if you want some of that red to bleed through. But me, I'm just kind of a nut that way, so I just put two uh, base, uh, just two thin layers of pavement paint and uh, wait for it to dry. 
So now that I got the bases all fully painted up with my pavement paint, the next thing I need to do now is dry brush the highlights on this. And what I did real quick is just give it a once over with some Anita's uh, acrylic paint. I used gray once again. We've had this color before in our lineup. And I just did a quick once over on the entirety of the base as well. So you can see here it brings out the, the texturing really nicely. It makes it look like, you know, this ashy kind of, you know, coal furnace look to it and that's exactly what i did um once again you can bring this to any degree of lightness you'd like or a darkness if you want to i just did a really quick once over with the dry brushing on the bases but you can go as dark as you or as light as you want so really simple step on this part all right, and the very last method I use, of course, to base these miniatures one last time, as I did another quick dry brush with Apple Barrel's Granite Gray is what I decided to use again. It's a really bright gray, it's so bright it's almost white, but not quite. And so I just did a really soft dry brushing over the entirety of the bases. Now, if you notice in the guy in the middle of the formation, he's got a bright white corner there. I applied a little too much gray paint on that, so, you know, be careful with it because you could create something like that where it's a little too bright but not to worry though because i'm gonna put some blood effect on these bases here in a second and so that's gonna go away once i get done putting my gore effect on here but that's exactly what i did i just did a quick dry brushing real fast with the granite gray and the reason why i do that is because like i said before it looks like they're walking over a field of ash is what it looks like is going on i just imagine these things coming out of the uh, uh coming out of the fiery pits of uh of hell basically kind of like uh from uh, silent hill and that everywhere these guys walk the earth becomes scorched and that's the effect that i wanted on that part and that's exactly what i did so now that you're done dry brushing your bases to create this ashen look the next thing we're gonna do now is applied homemade blood effect all over these miniatures and as much core as we want to. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that real quick. All right, so next we're going to use is the homemade blood effect. I used three parts true red uh, by Nita's acrylic paint and one part uh, burnt umber to make my reddish brownish gory color. And then I take whatever the amount I make from that and I add half and half with polyacrylic by Minwax. I use clear gloss uh, finish for the polyacrylic. And what it's going to do is going to create this bloody red slime, okay? Now I know there's other blood effect paints that you can buy out there like Blood for the Blood God uh, by Citadel Paint. You could use that stuff, but let's face it, I mean, that stuff's kind of expensive. Whereas you can make like like ounces of this stuff for pennies on the dollar. The polyacrylic will run you seven bucks, the paints will run you 65 cents for the red, 50 cents for the burnt umber, and it has a perfectly good result as well. So you mix up that blood effect and then you just go to town on these miniatures by adding as much blood as you want to. So you can see a lot of the Hellblades, I decided to dip the tips of the Hellblades in, uh, in the blood effect to make it look like they, they stabbed somebody in the blade, you know, slowly getting coated. For their tongues, I painted that up as well to make it look like it's dribbling out of their mouths because it looked like they took a chunk out of somebody on their off hands i also painted up up to their elbows where i resent the fact that they clawed somebody and they you know the blood dripping down that way as well and then of course probably the most important part i decided to add the blood effect all over the bases of these miniatures as well and just kind of randomly did it uh, like i said i wanted to create this ashy kind of bloody bog look that these guys are walking around in and it looks really really cool that reddish color just really pops against the gray base and just looks really phenomenal it makes your miniatures look really gory and you know bloody and all that kind of stuff which makes sense because you know corn is the god of blood in warfare and you know corn cares not from once it flows so here's a close-up shot of the blood effect on the miniatures, as you can see on the tongues and also on the blades on their off hands. I even put some on the instrument to look, look like somebody, like he bludgeoned some party to death with the, uh, the the brass horn that he's using. I also put in all the bases as well, as you can see there. So it looks like there's these rivulets of blood all over the place, make it look really gory and like really, you know, blood soaked. Because, you know, if you when, you're co when you have an army, a unit called blood letters, you imagine for them to spill some blood, right? I mean, that's exactly what they did. I also did exactly the same thing with the battle standard bears in the background um the one on the left with the huge skull of corn icon um it has actual sculpted blood coming off of it so i just you know painted all that part with the bright with, the, with my homemade gore effect to make it look like it's bleeding and the same thing with the um the banner the black banner as well i actually coated the front and the back of it with the blood effect too made it look like like the standard bear had dipped his flag in some blood to you know make it look like you know look what i did you know that kind of thing and so as you can see here it just looks really gruesome and really scary and frightening when you're all done with using the blood from the blood god and then we have one more step and then we're pretty much done with the entirety of the process so the last thing you need to do, of course, is base coat the rim of your bases. Um, I suggest using Skyline by Folk Art. It's a nice grayish blue color. It's really nice to use, and it, you know it's also very opaque as well. So I put two thin coats of the Skyline along the rim of the bases, and when you combine this 
grayish blue with the gray and black on the base and the gore effects it really has a nice contrast and makes it look really really awesome as well it makes the bases really stand out on these miniatures at the same time it really contrasts as well with the red flesh that these guys are you know that they have and it also looks really good with the gore effect too and this looks really really awesome by the time you're all said and done it just kind of blends each other as well the problem that a lot of corn army has have when you have the problem that most people have when painting a corn army is that it looks very monochromatic like i said earlier just red gold and black is what it looks like just tons of it so you want to add something to your miniatures that helps contrast a little bit and add some variety uh, whether you're consciously aware of it or not the bases that your miniatures actually stand upon the way you paint them and design them it has a lot to do to unify your entire army and at the same time add a contrast to it so that way it kind of breaks up the monotony of what you're seeing so as you can see here this this gray color the sky blue this uh, grayish blue color with the gray really helps bring out a lot of the details in the bases as well as the miniature and it contrasts really nicely as well and it's very cool looking and that's exactly what i did when i put these guys together and here's a close-up of the final result for our unit of 20 blood letters and as you can see there it looks really awesome looks really gruesome these guys look like they're crossing a field of ash and fire and pools of blood of their enemies are around their feet and it looks like they're out to bring some skulls for the skull for the throne of uh, corn and blood for the blood god so that's exactly how these miniatures will look like so now that we're done painting up these guys we're going to show you exactly what the method we use and the materials we use to do this as always, we're gonna show you two different versions. We're gonna show you the version where you use Citadel range of paints by Games Workshop as well as Army Painter and show you how much that would cost you to buy all the materials to paint up this army. And then we're gonna show you our cheapskate method as well. If you wanna know how long it took us to paint up this unit of corn uh, blood letters, if I took all the hours together and added it together, I would say approximately about a week's worth of work. Uh, assuming that you paint an hour and a half per day, I would say about a week of, what, of work it would really basically took to, to put this unit together. So with that being said, we're going to show you the Citadel method first of what you need to buy to use the Citadel method, and then we'll go to my Chief's Game method next. All right, so let's go and talk about the shopping list that you need to purchase from Citadel Games Workshop Citadel line of paints if you want to paint this exact same method I use, but you want to use the name brand stuff. So first of all, you'll need your Corax white spray that runs you about $17, and same thing as your Mephiston red spray that runs you $19.50 to create the same quick spray method like we used for our miniatures. Next, if you wanted to do the matte varnish as well, you will need to purchase Munitorium varnish by Games Workshop by Citadel that runs you another $19.50 as well. For the red, you will need to buy a tub of Mephiston Red that runs about $4.55. For the gray, for the dry brushing that we did, you'll need to buy a tub of Eschen Gray, runs you $4.55 as well. Now for the orange, for the Tropic Orange color that we use to do all the dry brushing as well as the blades, you'll need to buy Luganath Orange that runs you $4.55. You'll need to buy a tub of Black Templar for all the black effects, that runs you another $4.55. For the pink, you'll need to buy Fulgrim Pink, once again, $4.55. For the sky blue effect, you'll need to buy Lothar Blue for $4.55. And for the white, you'll need to buy a tub of White Scar for $4.55 as well. Now, if you wanted to do the like the fiery Hellblade like we did for this one, uh, the base coat would be Jacaro Orange, which runs you $4.55 for that. You'll then need to buy a dry brush of Hexos Pattern, which is a dry yellow color for the dry brushing techniques. That runs you another $4.55 as well. For the lighter gray finishes that we put on the bases, you'll need to buy Ultima gray which is four dollars 55 cents for that one and for the dark brown for the burnt umber you'll need to buy a tub of wildwood which runs you seven dollars and eighty cents now i'm not sure why that one is so much more expensive than the other ones i'm assuming because the tub might be bigger I don't know, maybe Games Workshop realizes they usually need to buy brown in there, they want to charge you more. Not really sure for that one. And for the metallic paint, for the gold, you'll need to buy a tub of Retributor Armor, which runs you $6.10. And then to do the basing, the, the rim of the basing, I'd purchase the Fang, that runs you $4.55 for that. Now, if you want to do the quick paint method like we did, you would have to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone, which runs you $32 in total. And then, of course, for the gore effects on the miniatures, you'll need to buy a tub of Blood for the Blood God. It is their uh, technical paint line that runs you $4.55 for that. So assuming that you wanted to purchase all of these items to paint this unit up, you're talking about a grand total investment of $156.50. And these prices are from the Games Workshop website, the United States website. And that's exactly how much it would cost you in order to do this same method uh, with these paints. 
All right, so let's go and talk about the cheapskate method real quick. So, once again, you'll need to buy a can of Color Place Flat White Spray Paint that runs in 98 cents, as well as two cans of Krylon. One is Burgundy Satin Finished Spray Paint, which runs you $5. Another can of Krylon Matte Varnish Spray, which runs you $5 as well. And both of those I purchased at Walmart. The next two colors you'll need to purchase are Anita's Acrylic. Those are from, I got those from Hobby Lobby. You'll need to buy a tube of red, of True Red, which runs you 65 cents, and a, tu a, a, a tube of gray, which also runs you 65 cents as well. Now, for the apple barrel paints, these are for the things like the dry brushing, the basing, everything that we use for that. Uh, you'll need to buy apple barrels, tropic orange, pavement, light pink, sky blue, white, ripe tomato, sunny day, granite gray, as well as burnt umber. Those all will run you 50 cents per tube. Uh, the tropic orange is used for all the dry brushing. The pavement is used for the bases as well as for all the horns and claws and such. The sky blue is used for the eyes. The light pink is used for the tongues. The white is used to pick out the teeth. The ripe tomato is for the hell blades. The sunny day is used for the dry brushing on those hell blades. The granite gray is used for the dry brushing on the bases. And the burnt umber, of course, is used for the gore effect that you'll need uh, to create the uh, homemade blood effect that we use for these miniatures as well. Now for the metallic paints, you need to use Folk Arts Pure Gold, which runs you 75 cents. Uh, you'll get that at Hobby Lobby, which is the most expensive paint that we have here. And same thing with Folk Arts Skyline for that grayish blue color that's on the rims of the bases. That will also run you 75 cents as well. Now, for the quick paint method that we use to paint these up, you will need to buy a can of Midwax Poly Shade Mission Oak. That will run you $7 in order to buy that. And to do the blood effect like we did for the homemade blood effect, you'll need to buy a can of Midwax Polyacrylic Gloss Finish that runs you about $7 as well. Now, the nice thing about that is that when you mix it with the True Red and the Burnt Umber, like in the uh, formula I showed you beginning, um, it's going to give you ounces of this stuff that you'll just never run out of. Um, in the end, if you were to buy everything brand new, like we're suggesting in this one, it would crock about a grand investment of $30.98. So when you take our $30.98 grand total and subtract it from the 100 $56.50 total that Citadel Paints would cost you. We're talking about a total savings of $125.52. So as you can see there, you can buy a hell of a lot of miniatures for $125 or box sets of miniatures if you wanted to, or a whole new game, or whatever, or not even spend it all and just save it because that's what we're all about here is about saving you money. So that's gonna do it for this one, you guys. This is how you quickly and cheaply paint up some blood letters of corn. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news that's related to this channel. That's going to do it for this cheap shot, you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. You guys stay classy and peace out.